Hello everyone, my name is Lamont Pounds. Thank you for joining in for yet another video. So today, I will be showing you how we use the 2D camera effect. Now overflow frame, this is the option used when adding camera movement. We want to make sure this box is checked. This will bring up your settings. You're going to set the type of shot that you will be executing. Mine is a shot panning downward, so our canvas will be vertical rather than horizontal. To add the camera to your timeline, I then click on the animation tab, new folder, and then 2D camera. So we use the timeline to set our keys. We use the object tool located here to operate our camera's actions that will be recorded on the timeline. Now knowing how to use the camera tool, this here is the camera path that I've set for my scene. In order to apply this camera effect to our animation, we must first drag all our animation into the camera folder. If you skip this step, the camera effect will not apply. We are then going to render for review. When you want to preview camera movement, you can do so by enabling animation. Go to playback settings and then render 2D camera. Also under render 2D camera, be sure to click on render before starting playback so that it can process your work to give you an effective playback without any lag. To go to the export functions, we must go to file, export, and render it out as a movie. If your scene is completed and needs external effects, we'll render it out as an AVI and apply the added effects in another program. If it doesn't need any external improvement, then render as an MP4. Now make sure to check this box before rendering. Now to make adjustments to your camera without affecting your animation, again we must click on the operation tool located here, and for the sub tool, we'll click object. This allows us full control over our camera function. We can adjust the camera however we please by using this object tool. It allows us to make any necessary adjustments. It allows us to add in any new keyframes. It also allows us to curve our camera and become a bit more creative. And if we need to, we can also scale the shot if it requires any zoom tricks. Now here's a neat trick on subtle movement when animating characters. So first, we block out our action. Our character is easing into a kneeling position. We don't want the movement to be abrupt, so we're going to have him ease into it. So in order to do so, we duplicate our previous frame. We then go to edit and transform and click onto the free transformation function. This allows us to skew scale and shift our illustrations perspective however we like to. We inch our illustration forward using this function. And to refine this trick, we'll also use the mesh transformation function located in the same area under the edit tab in the transformation settings. This gives us a bit more control. We'll then lasso parts of our character that we want to move separately in different directions. So for instance, our character's head so our goal here is we want our character's head to move downward, his chest to edge outwardly, his knee will move in a forward but downward motion, this arm will come forward, and this elbow and arm will drop lower on our character's leg. And those are our motion cues. So after transforming our illustration using those functions, we must make sure to re-illustrate the line work. This will give the illusion of our character moving forward 
rather than scaling forward. The difference from the two are huge. Now, if there are other elements involved in your scene that interacts with your character, the force of the wind interacting with our character's hair and the fur on his shoulder pad, that will call for new animation for all of 17 frames. And this is how we execute subtle movement. Also, a quick note on the onion skin function. Located here in your timeline, this is a great way to preview your in-between work as you progress forward in your animation. You can set the opacity and the color of your onion skin function by going to the animation tab, click on show animation cells, and then onto the onion skin settings. So here you can adjust the display colors for your previous and next frame. And here you can adjust the opacity of your onion skin function. This allows you to do very effective in-between work and is a perfect function when animating subtle movement. The next phase, the tie down stage. The tie down stage is where you add in your character into the rough animation. Thank you for watching yet another video. Again, my name is Lamont Pounds and from my partner Prince and I, stay safe.